welcome to the Wet Coast Wolves podcast. Um, today is November 17th, 2016. Um, hi to everyone coming back and everyone who's new. Thanks for checking us out. Um, we're coming to you from Wet Coast Wolves, which is a um, LYS in Vancouver. Um, and we have a special guest Yay, special today, guest. in case you didn't notice. Um, <laughs> Would you like to introduce yourself? <laughs> sure. Um, I'm Sylvia, and I'm a knitwear designer from Vancouver, BC. I live in East Van. Um, you may know me as Soft Sweater Knits. Um, <laughs> most people know my patterns, but not, might not know me now. Um, so I've designed the Lonely Tree Shawl and Waiting for Rain, um, which kind of went viral. So, yeah, yeah. It was super popular, that one. Mm, so pretty. Yep. Yeah, that was... A hilarious month of my life. <laughs> <laughs> the most hilarious month of my life. But yeah, and um, yeah, that's me. Who are you? Um, I'm Glenda, and you can find me on Ravelry as Glenda, and on Instagram as Glenda McDonald. Um, and yeah, that's all I'm gonna say. I think I only follow the Wet Coast Wolves. I need to follow you. My mine is. <laughs> it was less. Um, used and then I just remembered it about six months ago and started <laughs> actually using it oh, and I'm like oh yeah I have another Instagram account let's put that one to work um and I'm eco geek otherwise known as Bernadette in real life um I should have done that at the beginning oh well <laughs> um yeah uh I don't know what I was gonna say oh um I always forget to mention this if you are looking for show notes and more details on anything we mentioned either down in the doobly-doo or they're over in the Ravelry group. <laughs> like, it's over that direction. <laughs> it's in the Ravelry group. The Ravelry notes are more detailed. Um, I'll link to all of Sylvia's um, fancy things in in the Ravelry notes. Um, in case anyone hasn't heard of the Waiting for Angel, which yes. would be honestly really surprising. <laughs> or you could go back, what, three or four episodes and just see where it is. Yes. Oh, yeah. Well, I did the rain outside because oh, that's right. I have issues with fingering weight shawls. Yep. They just <laughs> take too long. So and this... do I, and I still love them. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, so, um, we all seem to be wearing finished knitting today. Oh, yes. And quickly go over that. Um, I, just because I'm already talking, I'm waiting, wearing my campside um, cardi, which I've worn before, um, in Will of the Andes by Knit Fix in the world's brightest green. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's very green. Yes. I love it. I'm thinking about dyeing my hair this color. Yeah. Because it's almost there. <laughs> Um, are you wearing the authenticity? Me? Or? Yes, I am. This is like my, all my samples are, um, out in the world being fondled by people. <laughs> so <laughs> I have like one, I like left all my samples cause I did a trunk show at 88 stitches. I left them all there for the month and I was like standing there going, Oh, I need one to wear. <laughs> and I'm like, I really want authenticity. And she's like, take it. I'm like, oh. so yeah, so I have one shawl <laughs> and I wear it like every day and it's getting felted. Because this yarn is so, like, squishy and wonderful. Is that the Sweet Fiber from... Sweet Genesis? Fiber Canadian. Yeah, that yarn is gorgeous. Dyed in Canada, milled in Canada, breathes an odor of Canada, <laughs> and it's, um... It evaporates like off the mid-city shelf. Apologies. It actually <laughs> smells amazing. Like, she must have, like, her house must smell like this, because it's got this, like, really lovely kind of... Like not wool smell to it yeah. as well. Anyway, I'm pretty obsessed. I, I would smell it, but uh, that might seem weird if you're wearing mm. it. <laughs> you can smell it after. But yeah, so I um, yeah, and I've just been wearing it pretty much nonstop. I'm also freezing, and I yeah. do not know why. Well, it's because it's like eight degrees today. It finally yeah. got cold. It's there's, been yeah, it's there's been there's actually cold. snow on grouse today. Been cold. It, like you That's could see nice. it this morning for the two and a half seconds that the mountains were visible. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, look. Aw. It's <laughs> pretty much what happened. I saw the one corner of the mountain out the window, and I'm like, hey, Mike, look, there's snow. By the time he came across to look out the window, it was gone. <laughs> Apparently, there was supposed to be snow in the valley today. But oh, really? Yeah, or yeah. like yesterday, they were oh. warning about it. There um, is which... a reason I live right next to the ocean. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's just a good idea for the most part, I think. Exactly. Life goals. <laughs> What are you um, so this is this is my uh, wood stove season sweater. You can so see. Nice. Oh, you can't even see the chevron. And can you? Maybe uh -uh. You, can, you can a little bit. A little bit. There so this go. is a much loved sweater. If you follow me on my personal Instagram, you'll. Um, I just had to repair the cuff. What's and it made of? It's um, technically so it's, nice. it's Columbia from Imperial Yarns, but it's very much like the custom wool mills. I'm gesturing because it's over there on the shelf. Um, I <laughs> just like ravelry. Huh, believe that side. it was mill like spun at the same place that custom wool mills is done, Thanks. but um, it's so soft and I love this sweater. And but I had to fix the the cast. It's top down and the cuff wore out, 
and at Knit City, one of the needle, the one of the stitches popped, so I finally fixed it. But as you guys can't really tell from there, but I used two different cast offs because apparently when I first oh, made yeah. this sweater, I did the proper rib cast off, and this time I just knit. That's funny, but that's okay. It I would never that notice it's that. Loved. Yeah. <laughs> But it's so sad. I have this little half a ball left and I was going to use it in like, you know, my leftover stuff. And now I'm like, wait, I have to hold on to it because what if the other cuff goes or, yeah. you know, the bottom edge? I'm going to, it has to be my repair ball because I can't, I can't run out of that yarn. I also, yeah, it's funny how um, we know, we don't think about that until it's too late. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, I'm going to get all my little balls of yarn that I'm never going to use and give them to somebody. And then I'm like, crap, I need all of those balls of yarn. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> There's a hole in this, a hole in this. Yeah. I don't know where that is. I want to knit another one. You need to do like, um, you know, when you buy like expensive of clothing it comes with a little bobbin of yep. thread as well as it like the buttons yep. are one thing but you need to do that little bobbin of repaired yarn yeah i think yarn that hoarder was sweaters. talking about the fact that she has like a fish wool like whenever she like knits something like a sweater for her family like yeah. she takes like a little bit oh, and winds yeah. it like if there's two colors winds the two skeins up together mm -hmm. in like a mini skein and drops yeah. it on a fish wool because then all of her stuff is in one place and that's her repair yarn and all the yarn mm, is yeah. together um, I, I thought it would be pretty too. Just yeah, I would. I was doing that with I had a box, but then that's what I raid when I start doing all these like use up the leftovers projects. <laughs> yeah. So, and you know, if you're making toys and whatever, you need random yeah. little bits of color. You just go into that box, and then yeah. they get used up. Yeah, so that's true. It defeats the purpose. I was thinking amigurumi would be like the worst for that. Like, <laughs> just like hmm, a little bit of white. Exactly. And, oh right, that was the thing I needed to fix that shawl that I did. Uh. Well, then you just do like visual repairing. I like, know. Yeah, Japanese which I style do with love like that. gold, gold yarn. Yes. Yeah, and and I'm totally into that. And if I hadn't, if I didn't have that big ball of green left over, I would have just done something similar. Like a really nice dark green could have made a fun yeah. cuff on it or, or something. Like, but rip it back and do like a stripe. Of yeah. So. Yeah. There you go. It was. It's amazing though. Like, because uh, I realized how much. Like, it's only three years old. This sweater, but I wear it so much that <laughs> the yarn up. is so. Yeah, and and yet at the same time, I can see like you know on the cuff, yeah. there's little places where it's getting quite fine. Mm -hmm. So you know, I'm gonna have to keep a closer watch on it and then make sure it doesn't. Because the key is to catch the mistake or the the hole when it starts, and not when it like yep. disintegrates and makes a giant mess. That's yeah. true. Um, do you okay? So. I have very few finished objects because the world lit itself on fire this week and I couldn't um, couldn't figure out what to do with my knitting, which seems to be a consistent plan for everybody. So I have one um, adorable foe. Um, Glenda has a bajillion. <laughs> um, little things. But um, since you're our special guest, Sylvia, do you want to go first? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. What did I write stuff. down onto the magic paper of things? Oh, right. So I have, I have like this. This isn't finished, obviously. <laughs> I made this coat of yarn. Yeah, you knit the whole coat. It's look great. It's beautiful. I'm gonna wear it pinned to my body. Um, so many fascinator ideas. I came into the shop like. Wait, no, it was at Knit City. I saw them for yeah. the first time. Knit City and these beautiful cones of custom woolen mills Prairie Sea Fusion were sitting tauntingly away like across <laughs> from my booth and um and i just wanted to knit lace with them and so i just i'm designing a series of three custom woolen mills these prairie sea so cool. fusion shawls Shall we have to pull them these across? are not blocked yes let's do that it's, I was like, yeah. we'll block. yay it's uh, actually pretty standard like chevron and lace but so it's nice. just the fact that it's made from like giant wool just it really it. yeah here you can yeah. have that one <laughs> i can't wait to see how that blocks out I'm, yeah, I'm hoarding. I have to wait till December. Oh, I love it. Away. That's okay. Yeah, <laughs> and no other like, models. I've got Just, like a leaf one too. That's which so cool. Should, yeah. I don't know. I can't style it properly. It'll because it'll, it'll lie flatter. Yeah, um, and it's and it'll be like the the you length of it will be the more under. underneath. Okay. Yeah, it's a big smooching. And you might want to you might want to wear it off centered too, yeah, like along so the side. So it's not like Sylvia's an expert shawl. Where I was like, I put that on my resume. Shawl stylist. <laughs> hey, it's totally a skill. Yeah. So so I've got this one, and then I've got a simple eyelet one that I'm I almost cast on and was knitting with this, but I find the ten millimeter needles. I have to take it slow. Take it slow. They're hard. Yeah, it's it's hard on your like it's not knitting. It's like another, I feel like really it's another hurt. skill. Yeah. Are you just going to wear that now, Glenda? I, I am. <laughs> it smells so sheepy. I, I love know. It. It's I love really nice. That yarn is great. I did, I mean, I could have probably done a little bit looser gauge even because it's just going to bloom mm -hmm. in that is. single ply. Yep. But we're going to block the ever living hell out of it. Just to warn you, it gets very heavy when you wash it. My yeah. My couch and sweater almost busted my wrist. Oh, man. When I was squishing the. the I, I made help. Then. I had mine in, yeah. like, in a bucket, like my sweater. And then when I went, I poured it out in the bathtub and then I jumped on it in the bathtub to squeeze the water yeah. out because I couldn't even lift it up to get it yeah. out of the... It was crazy. And so we have this timeline. So, like, I have... The other thing is I have a billion shawls 
coming up in the mm-hmm. next like five months that I've knit. Basically, I go through phases of like designing and knitting, and then I spend like three months on the computer doing all the oh, all that the computer stuff. stuff. Yeah. And so the last since the book was published, I spent like pretty much all of my time knitting things. Mm-hmm. And so I have just like and I don't block them. First, because I'm not good at it. Like, that's the main reason. But also because I cry every time I try and block something. I'll be, like, leaning over it, going, I can't get it straight. Yeah. And anyone in the room just looking oh, so sad at me. I um, was going to ask, like, it's a lot. This is going to be huge. You must have to get, like, two or three people to help you. I'm going to probably help Nicola with that. But yeah. Nicola does it all. Nicola oh, really? is a, the, literally a genius at blocking. Wow. Like, she's got a really good brain for it. And she's super, super, like, has good technique. And then also isn't stressed while she does yeah. it. Like, she just doesn't get stressed out. It's pretty amazing. Um, but we have a, oh, we're going to do a blocking party mm-hmm. and then a shooting, like, three days of shoots for the, when yeah. she's back in December. So, That's so fun. yeah, that was pretty I good. Just wear it for a I also knit them in, like, a day. Like, I yeah. had some, I had some, definitely had some pain, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're, like, so it's pretty funny. addictive. Because you're like, I cast on, I'm halfway good. done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> yeah, no, I have a cone of, um, I have custom woolen mills in my stash that's just waiting. Yeah. Well, I can send no them pattern pressure. too. I need some. I will <laughs> happily get you to test them. Ooh, I'll oh. test. I tend to when I do. Like, I, if I'm if I'm on the production where I'm like I I knit it and then write it up, mm-hmm. I just go through tech editing and don't test. But then when I do this like big lump of things, yeah. I always want them tested. So yeah, yeah, we could just get you guys to test. Yeah, them. absolutely. Works. Sign I, me up. And they'll be I think living here if you guys want them. Oh yes. Um, Yay. Yeah. Mainly because I think Glenda will just do this. Yeah, yeah totally. I'm going to come over to work every day in t-shirts and just wear this. Yeah, outfit. totally. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to do my one foe, okay. if that's okay, unless you have anything else to add. No, I guess. That's all. Um, and then Glenda can talk for a thousand years. <laughs> um, so the one foe I had was an almost foe last time as I finished my wasabi so whale cute. that looks like a weird circle from the front, but is secretly a whale from the side. <laughs> um, so he is the... Um, the twin of the other one I finished last time, um, knit with, um, sock yarn called Double. Um, you can knit the pattern in just sock yarn, um, but I wanted to get rid of the sock yarn. <laughs> so I held a double. Um, that one's yeah. a very good whale color. Yes, this yeah. one's great. Um, it's also your color of your hair and also everything you're wearing. Yes. I, I, I realize I accidentally have a theme in my life that it's all like greens and teals. People are like, oh, your glasses and your sweater about your hair. How put together you are. I'm like, no, I just have one color palette. And this is what I work from. So this is, um, yeah, the Wasabi Whale by Susan Cladino. It's for my Christmas knitting pile. Um, I now only have a small amount of things left to finish. And then, yeah, so... That's it. It's my baby wheel. Um, and I will just leave him there for now. Okay. I'm actually... He's really awkward looking. Glenda finished a thousand things. I, well, they're all little things, but okay, I'm actually going to take the shawl off because it's really warm in here. I was going to say, you're going to boil the dust. Start yeah. Walter. Okay, I'll okay. throw that back Thank into you. my pile, which is just the floor. Um, so <laughs> I apparently got knitting ADD this week, and I couldn't concentrate on, like, anything, and even in my FOs, I only brought like a handful of this stuff I actually worked on. But so I went a little nuts with my, I'm still doing my ease up my leftovers. Um, and so I made, I'll just show you all the different things. And they are all, all on Ravelry as well. So you can see all the details there. So this is called the leaving cowl. It's, you can't, can you see the lace? Probably it ha- tends to show up better. I find, I can't see it as well, but it shows up better after being I think you need to find it. your light. I think so. Channel your inner Tyra Banks and find the light. <laughs> spies, cowl spies. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, it'll probably come up better. I find it, when I go back and we'll rewatch the podcast, you can see them better. So that one's called the Leaving Cowl, and it's made with Drops Alpaca, just one ball with a little bit left over. Um, this one is called the Bluebeard Cowl. It's a drops pattern, and it's for kids. That's why it looks so tiny. <laughs> it does technically fit. Like, you can wear it like a... I like those little ones. You want like a little... We used to call them neck warmers when I was a kid. Dickies? Yeah, or ne- neck tukes or something. I always think like dickies or ascots. Oh. Like that in my head, that's what they are. To me, the dicky is like the turtleneck that comes down like here. Oh on the yeah, front and back. I actually so, think like the oh, fake turtleneck the technical neck. technical name. That would make. And sense. I've never quite understood the point of those because if it's cold enough to need a turtleneck, you kind of need oh, more than just a little like neck thing. Yeah. Well, those things you put um, them on over your sweater under your coat. I guess. Right? The yeah. Thing. Clearly, like, I did not live in a really it's cold to place. To make everything up. a turtleneck. Yes. <laughs> yeah. When you live in exactly. really cold weather, you're like, I will take anything that will fit on my body at any time. Because, yeah, anywhere other than BC, wind doesn't go through you. <laughs> if you put on layers, the wind will stop. 
<laughs> That's not streaming auto until it goes through you. No, I was just like in Saskatchewan. Like, it'll be minus 30. Oh, you gosh. just put on your outside, like, yes. your cold clothes, and you're like, I'm fine. Your shell. Here, yes. if you put on, like, a shell, it's still, like, right through your body. <laughs> it does not it damp. Through. It's yeah. not damp. Yeah, that's um, what I mean. So I'm calling this one my llama hat, just to get back to my... And this, because this is yeah, two sorry. different patterns. It's a super slouchy. It's actually really cute. And I think it's supposed to be more... I was thinking, thinking of it more for a guy, but whatever. <laughs> fits my giant head, so that means it should fit a man, right? So <laughs> what's the what's the pattern? Um, it's a combination of two pattern, two hats. Um, one of them is a drops pattern, like the top part is a drops pattern, and the bottom one I think it's called Graham. I thought yeah, it was, was a gram. Gram. <laughs> gram, yeah. yeah, but no, because the gram you're supposed to do a broken rib, and which is essentially like. A two row pattern and I could not keep the two rows straight and it looked really bad because oh. you, you knit it like inside out so that when you flip it out like you get pearl ridges and yeah. when I would turn it inside out it looked terrible so I'm like mm, we can't stay with that because apparently I can't watch TV and, and follow a two row pattern at the you same time because it's, it's it's the mist this mistake rib so yeah you always want to do a real rib exactly. <laughs> Um, and then this one is called the Milanese Lace Topper. You can't really, again, you can't really see it in this. That's just going to be a black hole. Just a black the, hole, yeah. but it's actually quite it's a nice, it's a pretty lace pattern, and it was really fun to do. It's like two and a half repeats of the pattern, and it's, I might do it again in the color you can actually see. If I can find a picture, I'll try and put it in. If not, please don't judge me. It's, the, it's <laughs> My beautiful. Ravelry picture, you can kind of see it, because okay. I took it on the white head, so. Well, if, if either that or I can, like, go on the project page mm. and take that yeah, picture. Yeah. Um, and then this one is, I started this last week, so you saw the beginnings of it. This Much smaller than I thought it was shawl. going to be. Caitlin French's Elk Tooth Shawl in the miniature version. I think this is how she originally wrote it for the Louette Gem Sport. And then she's redone it recently for the for worsted, so it's a lot bigger. Ah, But it's, it's just like a little, <laughs> you know, a little bandana. Yeah, you pin them at the back. Just like that or nice. something, so mm -hmm. it keeps you warm. Um, and then I did a scrappy leftovers hat based on the prism from Tin Can Knits, but then I went a little crazy with colors. Nice. Um, and of course it needs a pom-pom, because everything needs a pom-pom. And then the last one was this one. You can see the theme of my different colors, because this is the rest of the black and the gray. And it's just a little so It's kind of more a kid's hat, because I realized it's very short. But that was my knitting ADD, because I'm like, oh, nice. I can't I can't do bigger projects. I just wanted to do little things and get... It wasn't even starditis. Like, starditis, I just want to cast stuff on. This was like, I just needed to do something that I could finish in like half a day. Um, and I was going to say that um, I'm not putting those down there. Oh, yeah. Um, once Glenda many. starts finishing, like, less than 30 things, then I'll start doing <laughs> that. But if you want details, they won't be in the show notes. There, I made sure that they are all in my Ravelry page as well. So you can go and get all the individual details with photos for once. Sure. I, like, had a little mini photo shoot here the other day. Nice. I just, I don't have time to put up. Show notes are hard. Well, not just, it, no, like, to put up the <laughs> subtitles. It, my computer has started taking, like, five minutes to put a subtitle oh, no. up. So it's, oh. like, adding like doubling my editing time and that would take yeah, far too much time while. so sorry <laughs> um okay. sylvia what are you knitting well um <laughs> i'm knitting a, another sample of my first pattern the triangle cowl and i'm doing it out of a gray malabrigo this time um mostly because i just like love gray she says that she's wearing not gray. I'm mostly gray. <laughs> um, and uh, the it's my first pattern that I published, so um, just needs redoing. Um, and I don't have a ton of works in project progress. I did this epic shawl that I just finished yesterday, but I can't show you guys. Oh, it's a secret. Um, and it's real pretty, but it was one of those like design as you go ones that I do occasionally, which make me feel a little crazy. But so then I cast this on um, this morning at. 5 a.m. <laughs> when I do. was awake and you can't see it because it's not anything yet. <laughs> it's um it's gonna just be a sideways triangle. I'm like pretty obsessed with the sideways triangles that aren't on the bias right now. Right. Um so they're kind of just like I don't know, they're just kind of a cool like blanket with like a point here. <laughs> points. Um and it's gonna be a lace pattern that I found on the internet, which is usually not where I look for lace patterns. Um, yeah, it's going to be real pretty. It's, this is Range, um, Hinterland's Range that I picked oh, up right. at Knit City. This is unintentionally the Knit City pile, apparently. Um, <laughs> I was like, did you get the Malabrigo at Knit City as well? Um, I can't remember where I got that. It might, no, but the, the custom woolen mills oh, yes. falling in yeah. love with that from. Makes sense. But I'm pretty obsessed with this yarn. I actually designed two textured shawls, uh, with the it in mind and then when I cast on for some reason my gauge my gauge does this thing where it stretches stitch wise a oh, lot more okay. than um, row wise mm -hmm. and so I was having um, 
a hard time getting the the knits and pearls to like really look de like defined in yeah. the same way and so uh, those texture shawls might just get in abandoned but yeah whatever um and then of course i've got my two you can see my instagram for these they're slightly different purples and i got them at um Melissa's. It's um, Sweet Fiber in the Cashmerino 20, and I'm pretty sure I picked them up at 88 Stitches. Yeah, I did. Sometimes I just go to her house to take stuff. <laughs> but this one was an 88, 88 Stitches trip, and um, it's in Luna and Nocturnal. And um, they're, I, whatever dye process she does is a mystery of Melissa's dyeing, but she um, has little specks of like Nocturnal in mm -hmm. the Luna and Luna in the Nocturnal, and I'm pretty obsessed with that, so I'm doing stripes. And Oh, lace, short rows. Um, yeah, and this is just eyelets because now that's my new my new favorite thing in the entire universe. I have no idea what this will work out. The the design as you go is like my nightmare, and it's also oh, yeah. how you design the short row shawls. Mm. As you're like, I'm gonna knit a bit. Oh, like look at it. Just, yeah, I guess you have like, to like kind of see how they're playing out and where they're going. And yeah, yeah. and there's just no like you can chart them, but where they go is just you gotta just go for it. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a bummer. Because because if you if it doesn't look good then you're like oh, rip it all out. <laughs> so I have this like I have this love hate relationship with them because once they're designed I will knit them in like no time. I'm yeah. super happy with it. But then while I'm sending them I'm like so grumpy. So <laughs> anyway that's what's happening. Well, that's um, understandable. No one no one likes to have to rip out epic amounts of work. No. Um, yeah. But but I'm pretty excited about this yarn. It's cashmere, 20% cashmere. And Ooh. the colors are just really pretty. All, I, all of her colors are just amazing. Yeah, it's funny because I, I don't usually, like, I like to knit with neutrals. Mm -hmm. And that's purple. Purple's totally neutral. It's got a lot of gray in it. But yeah, it's got a lot of gray in it. Like, I, I can trick myself into thinking it's gray. <laughs> and well, any color can, I realize, be a, be a neutral depending on your wardrobe. I realize that, yeah. like, bright golden orange yellow is a neutral in my wardrobe yeah. the sheer amount of green and teal i own yeah um but see that's why it's good to have like a color palette that you generally draw from for your clothing and your knitting because then yeah. everything always works together and it all matches it's true i'm really into like slight color variations mm -hmm. so like i will likely photograph that one with gray purple and have that be the theme for it and yeah. like with the whites i like to go like white clothes and yeah. like those are I'm really like pretty basic with that stuff and I always just wear black all of the time so anything that I put on over top yeah. of the black is the accent color there you go. <laughs> so like white accent and white accent <laughs> but then you make your knitting your accent so that's perfect yeah totally that that's I was an accident but it worked great <laughs> <laughs> recommend it what are you uh, knitting along on um okay I'm gonna do this one last because that's Maybe. what I do <laughs> <laughs> um so I did not bring everything that I've been working on because my um, knitting ADD still continues and I didn't want to haul everything here. Um, so this valid. is just staying with my, <laughs> sorry? I said that's valid. <laughs> staying with my, using up my leftovers. This is my latest. Um, I just started this yesterday. You can see the little color stripes. So this actually is, um, I so realize you can't tell by just looking at the stripes, but I was reading on an old post from Grumparina's blog about helical knitting and it's um, basically I knit the hat, the, the uh, brim of the hat, and then you divide the stitches into three, and you each the first row of each third is a different color. And then as you go along, like right now I'm knitting with the gray, and I'll continue knitting until I get to all the way to here where there's the black, and then I switch to the black. Mm -hmm. And then you go around until you find the next one, which will be the red, and then you knit with that. And basically what you do is it's like... Your stripes never actually, like, you're not doing a full round where they come together at the end, which in knitting they never do anyway because you're te technically making a tube. Yeah. So it's like three layers of twists of stripes going cool. around in a big helix. Do you have to wrap your stitches when you get around to the next color, or is, there, is it no, no hole or anything? Um, in the On the first row, I probably should have because the very first row there were some little, <laughs> like, the joins are a little. It okay. looks like little jogs. Yeah, but, but your tails there's are a, there. You exactly. Just... There's a tail there to fix it, so okay. it'll be fine, but... No, Grimparina talks about it, I mean, it's like from 2008, the post, but um, she was doing a pair of socks with it, and it just sounded like a really cool yeah. concept. Interest for stocking that. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And, and, you know, just for stripes, because how many stripes can you do before it gets a little bit dull? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that was one. That's just going to be a kid's hat. Oh, that's cool. And then um, I have a sweater that I'm doing for a class so is tonight. Um, it doesn't, you know what, I'll show you the picture because otherwise it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. <laughs> so it is the Driftwood sweater from Isabel Kramer. 
Oh yeah, that's it there. It's really fun. It's a free one on Ravelry, and I'm not doing it with stripes. I don't know why. I was going to, but then oh, I know because there's another sweater I want to do that's striped, and I don't need. I don't want too many striped sweaters. Not yet, anyway. <clears throat> so then you can just see I've sort of. Eh, I'm almost done my first ball of yarn, but no, you can't see. I had it laid out nicely, but there's the neckline, and that's the start of the button, the top of the button band there. So it's just basic, typical top-down sweater. I'm like two rows away from taking off the sleeves. But that's to do in tonight's class, so I couldn't get any farther. Oh, I was like, that's the best part, though. I know, Once but... you get past the sleeves, the sweater's pretty much done. Like, <laughs> well, so this one... The sleeves. I feel like the sleeves yes, are... Yes, I don't like sleeves. But if you have a sleeve cap, they're, like, a part way done for you. Yep. True. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I actually will do those on Magic Loop, because then I can do two at once and get them done the same, so they actually match each other, if not the pattern. Cool. There you go. Um, but yeah, then this one also, too, like, it has to be joined still. It will be joined, but it joins quite a bit, like, quite far down your body so I have to separate the sleeves and then do four inches and then it joins which is hmm. kind of unusual but yeah. well it's a Henley right so, yeah basically that is a very deep uh, it's deep a very deep though. one it's a sexy sweater <laughs> <laughs> only if you don't do the buttons up it's <laughs> <laughs> true or like don't wear a tank top yeah I was gonna say yeah, yeah, yeah exactly yeah. Um, and then the, I figured out last week we had our five minute discussion on sock heels, our last episode, which <laughs> apparently bored Bernadette to death. Not bored. It didn't bore me, but I was just like, that's why I put the warning in. I was just like, to some people, this is probably super yeah, interesting. To me, that's we Shell knitters all go cross at that point. <laughs> yeah, well, just like, also, we were like having a couple, of, we had a couple of beers and we were just like not making, when I was edit, like, editing it, I was just like, this probably doesn't make a lot of sense to anyone other than us. I think, at yeah. This well, okay, so the thing that I was realizing though is because I kept saying self striping and in my head that meant all kinds of self patterning not just like striping yeah and I think I think I was failing to get my point across because I was you were talking about variegated yarn and using the word self patterning well, and yeah in my head it was the, the hat trick yarn this is not self patterning or self striping yeah it does not do any of those but things. see when I knit we'll my just rehash this discussion <laughs> when I knit my senator's like, socks which is the senator's hat trick yarn it wasn't it was doing a very distinct pooling pattern so in my yes. head that's a stripe and it was a pattern stripe because that's it's and pooling I, is not intentional though like, no but people don't dye stuff intentionally and self pattern yeah self Neither did I, but I like I wanted that way. pool, the, how it was pooling. I wanted that to continue through the sock. That was yes. my point. I wanted to keep the same pooling and not change it. <laughs> yes. Anyway, so then I did. I was in subtitles to translate <laughs> that for people. This is actually what we meant. <laughs> yes. Um, anyway, then I found I was doing some um, reading, and I realized that if I do just a short row sock heel, then I can. It goes this way, right? Because I do cuff down. Um, and so I tried. This is a German short row heel. It's also called the boomerang heel. Um, and I found it on a Regia free pattern, but I had to modify it because I realized that this is actually supposed to be done in the same color way. Because you do after you do one direction of short rows, you're supposed to do two rounds around the full sock. And I did not mm -hmm. want a black band going across the, like the top yeah. of the foot, so I just left that out and just went back and forth across the heel into the other side. So it's very to me, it's a very shallow heel. I'm used to having like a two inch heel flop. Mm. So I tried it on and it kind of fits, but I have to wait till there's the rest of the sock to figure it out. But yeah. it may be something I do more of. I think I'm just gonna have to go back to the afterthought heel. I just hate the afterthought heel. <laughs> I hate picking up all those stitches. It is a very shallow short row heel. Like it's, it's yeah. not short row heels in general, it's that one. Yeah. That one is very shallow. And I I just wanted to try this one because I prefer the German short rows if I'm doing short rows. Yeah. And it's really, the last time I tried a short row heel, you can't, because the short row heel that I was in doing, you actually went and picked up your wrap and then wrap the next stitch again. Yeah. And you can't do that with German short rows because you end up, the, the double loops like double up on themselves. Yeah. And and so I, it w didn't work out very well. And so that's why I thought this one, which they actually tell you to use a German short row, I thought I would try it. And I guess, I don't know, it kind of works, but I'll see how it fits later. I'm, I have, I'm pretty obsessed with the German short rows. They're really great. Yeah. They're, I've tried, we did, the, I did a workshop once and we did the German short row, the wrap and churn and the Japanese one. Yeah. And the German was the most clean and like oh, you, you yeah. couldn't see it. And it's so. also the one that you don't have to think about as much because you're like, yeah, no longer you're like, wait, what the hell is that? Short oh, right. row time. Yeah. Put it yeah. together or whatever. Yeah. The only thing I find is that if I'm following a pattern that has wraps and turns I have to think too much to Turn substitute it yeah well that's that was, yeah there's this amazing YouTube video. I have a pattern coming out with German short rows there's an yeah. amazing YouTube video which will be linked in the show notes <laughs> yes. I think it's actually on my website under techniques because I'm pretty obsessed and she says to just change the work and turn uh, wrap and turn to turn and work oh, so right. that when so you're then... when you're gonna wrap you 
turn. Because it, it you, is that wrap stitch that you work in the German one, right? Yeah. Yeah. And the thing is that you just can't you can't work the next stitch. You just would I don't know, it gets weird. But for yeah. if you're actually substituting them, but it works really well if you're if you know how to do both techniques yeah. to help remember it. Sometimes I, I do it, and sometimes I'm like, no, I'm just going to do what it says because I don't want to think. Yeah, totally. <laughs> That's what it comes down to. Sorry, I tangled my yarn. The last one I'm doing, I finally cast on, because um, apparently I needed to cast on another pair of socks. It's not going to get finished. Um, <laughs> and this is the yarn I bought from um, the Sin City Yarn Shop in Las Vegas. Nice. And it's kind of pretty, actually. I like it. Yeah. So I'm just going to do two inches of rib. And then vanilla, because I realized that any kind of textured sock does not get finished. Yep. <laughs> Maybe I'll have a hope of finishing this one. Yeah, um, looks good, though. And yeah, and so this is like your uh, merino, I think it's, it's 75, 25, and it's DPNs forever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, is that all your... That's all. All your whips? Yeah. Okay. Um, I cast on everything um, <laughs> this week. My knitting went totally haywire so I have a giant pile of stuff um I didn't bring one thing I've been working or had been working on like crazy and didn't bring with me is my cozy memories blanket just because I couldn't fit it from the sheer amount of sweaters that were in my bag because um, <laughs> bringing a giant blanket with you to work is sometimes hard um but I added like I think 30 hexagons onto it I'll try and take a picture because I left all the ends hanging out the world set itself on fire, and I just needed to make 30 of the same thing in different <laughs> colors. So it is now at the point where, like, if my, what is he, like, my almost six-foot-tall boyfriend is, like, slightly curled up on the on the couch sleeping, it now actually covers most of it. Oh, wow. So it is very long. I've been using it. I can use it. It's thin and long at this point, so I need to add more, more width. But um, Are you going to continue it, like, forever, or will you actually call it a day at some point and then start a new one? At some point, um, maybe. <laughs> Um, my dad really wants a scrappy blanket, yeah. so at some point I think I have to start one for him as well. Um, but I think once it gets, like, way too large for our bed, like, inappropriately giant, <laughs> yeah. then I have to start a new one. <laughs> but I have no intention of finishing it anytime soon, because um, it's one of those things that you pull out when you just need... Uh, one, you can't stare at your knitting anymore, because um, the colors are driving you insane, or you just need to make 30 of the same things in different yarns, but don't want to cast new things on. I misinterpreted that as while you're wearing it and knitting, that your knitting blends into it. Yes. So you're like, where did it go? That's what I thought you were saying. When you just can't knit anymore, it's you can't knit with it on. Yes, no, yeah, just like if you can't stare at your... sucked into... Whoa. Can't stare at your knitting anymore, yeah. It's, it's nice to have, because it's a crochet blanket, it's nice to have that variation too, because like I was... If, you know, if you're power knitting and you start, your fingers start cramping up on you, at least it's a totally different motion with the other hand. And yeah. The problem is, is that like I, cause I went so ham on it, like my arm started hurting a bit. Yeah. I'm still recovering yeah. from just like crocheting for eight hours for two <laughs> it's days. kind of well, sad yeah. that you can get RSI from knitting and crocheting. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. You, but think, you really think you like do enough of it that you work up your muscles and they never get tired. No, it's the opposite. Yeah. so sad. They get so strong that they start blocking all your nerves. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah that's the problem. Guess, yeah, that's true. I'm proud <laughs> of that Trap part. muscles for days. Your muscles Really. like super stoked it's like god do this so well and then all your nerves are like help why are you so big anyway you should do story like, of my um, life you do like web md videos yeah, exactly. explaining <laughs> RSI. your muscles are just so stoked don't get me started on rotator cuff <laughs> um and i'll just quickly talk about this because it looks the same but more um, of last week or last time, it's just a giant. You've got to be able to cut. I can't imagine you have to use both skeins for that. It <laughs> it well, really... this isn't this isn't for me, but this is the color palette of my life. Um, so I haven't even finished the first ball. It won't die. <laughs> I have balled up the second ball in anticipation of hating my life more. It's, it's doing that thing where it reproduces in, the, in the, your project bag when you aren't looking. I think so. So this is the hat trick yarn. It's vaguely based off of a circle scarf oh, pattern that I found online. To, it, does it does. It totally. Longer. Yeah. No, like for a once round cowl, I could stop now. Yeah. But um, I want to make it like a giant cowl that she can wear while walking her dogs yeah, and all no, the things. It have to be you can stuff so. it with something. <laughs> yeah, I know. Just like it's so a neck cool. pillow scarf. You could stuff it with this yarn. <laughs> and then you wouldn't have to knit it all. You could say it's all in there. There you go. There. We should t somebody should totally design a cowl that is doubles as like an airplane pillow. You know, you see those people that stupid little well, half these things are for. When I yeah, went to Ireland, true. like I had my offhand lace shawl and I just rolled it up and put it around my yeah. neck and I was like, good to go. I use mine as bl a blanket. I like double it, like double it over myself, shawls. and then yeah, get yeah. get a uh, Mike to wear a shawl and then just borrow it from him. Um, yeah, so this is the the tube tube scarf of doom. Yeah, I'm slowly slowly working on it, forever probably. It's gonna get really boring. I apologize. 
Um, so other Christmas knitting uh, that I'm working on, Wasabi Way, you're gonna have to move. <laughs> um, as I cast on another Shelob Shrug. Ah, yarn down. Glenda, can you kick that? Nope, oh, Sylvia's got, Sylvia's it. got it. Thank you. Um, so I just cast on another Shelob Shrug for. What is that? It's a uh, swish. Ceiling. Find it fixed. Oh, okay. Just super wash merino. Um, oh, good. You can see the lace. That's excellent. Oh, yeah. So that's, yeah. It's just super wash merino. Um, she lob shrug. Um, I realize I'm not in a lace place right now, so I'm trying to do <laughs> at least a repeat um, a day, and then it'll get done eventually, because you have to do 17 repeats. Um, which is done well in time for Christmas, then. Yeah. It'll be done um, at some point, but just it's not where... You guys will understand where all my knitting time went in about three projects. And we <laughs> save it for last. Um, other Christmas knitting I cast on and got to the sleeve separation on my Wonder Years sweater um, that I originally had ripped out so my bag is filled with tiny bits. So <laughs> got past the sleeve separation and I'm like, oh, I'm fine. And then just put it down forever. Um, so it's just various worsted weight acrylics again. It's terribly exciting. Wonder Years pattern. Yarn held double. Um, 2T size stuff. But yeah. The bag is filled with just random balls of yarn. <laughs> You've all got nice, really nice project bags. Oh, thank you. Um, I've, this one, the other ones I've made for the most part, this one's a, a Bags by Awesome Granny bag awesome. that I won last year for knitting too many things. <laughs> it's um, be an upside. Other than true. having lots of knitted things. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then this one I won from the Canada Cal. Oh, that's pretty. And the two tangled skeins. This one I didn't make. This one's by my needle crafts. Mm -hmm. And it has a little divider on the inside. Oh, wow. see it's with the zipper? Yeah. What a good idea. Pocket. And as someone who knits my socks in stereo, it's my favorite thing. So these are Brian's um, greener pasture socks um, that have made a little bit more progress. Uh, back into the pocket with you. Um, just wanted to. Yeah. Just patents gray, 64 so nice. stitches. He, um, it's a crazy dense gauge because he is mean to his socks. So yeah. instead of going up to a two and a half or three millimeter, it's a 2.25 and just like a oh, bulletproof wow. gauge. Yeah, yeah, that's, um, small for that yarn. Yep. So it's just a thing I, it's my vanilla knitting when Emily is around because that's her Christmas present and I don't want her to see it. So obviously I had to cast on socks, but I really want to get these done because I want to cast on Christmas socks. It's past Remembrance Day, so now oh, I can knit yes. Christmas things. I was looking at my Christmas yarn yesterday. I have the Turtle Pearl Bah Humbug, and I need to bring that out. Yeah, anyway, this is awesome. I love this Canada bag. And okay, so the thing that took all my knitting time. Just ignore me. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing that took all my knitting time that's in my giant Ravenclaw bag yeah, um, is um, my Fargo pullover that I talked about last time. It's almost done. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. Right? Okay, so this is where all my time went. <laughs> so I cast this on on the 13th or the 14th. Um, but, yeah, so this is the Fargo Pullover by Sheila, Sheila Toy Stromberg, I believe. I do have the pattern in my bag. Doo -doo -doo. Yeah, so oh, that's... Oh, man, it's going to be so pretty. I know, I'm so excited. Okay, so that's when it looks like finished. Mine is currently a weird Harlequin blob. Um, so each one of the little triangly bits on my sweater is using about 20 grams, so I'm just using a bunch of little leftovers. That's the bigger triangles, right? Yes. Okay. So the little triangles are all, um, the black ones are just a Cascade 220, and then this guy is um, a Superwash BFL I got from Riverstone Yarns at Fibers West in her sale bin, which is awesome, because <laughs> it's hand-dyed BFL and it was $10, which is madness. Um, and like just I get to use the random skeins that I've had in my stash that were doing nothing like this ribbing was um, Mineville project that I got at Beehive ages ago um, And then yeah, just a bunch of random scraps from other projects um, I got very different. I couldn't match her gauge and get a fabric that I liked She knits this on like her ribbing on five and a half millimeters and then the rest of the sweater on a US 10 which wow. is a really With loose yarn. gauge. Yeah. She must be a tight knitter. I'm. She got like 16 stitches oh. or something. Like it's a loose gauge. I just didn't like the fabric. I'm, there's mm -hmm. there's been a number of patterns out there right now with 18 wait. stitches. Oh, 18. Okay. But I, was, I still I didn't like her gauge. I, yeah. So I went down to a US eight for the body and got 20 stitches, and then 
I'm knitting the size small numbers. Um, and this is this is all I've been doing. This is yesterday I had the day off and this is all I did. I sat on the couch and I did on this. Nice. And it's my favorite thing ever. How close is it? Because you bought them up, hey? Right? Yeah. So I have one more color repeat and then ribbing and then I'm done. Oh, sweet. So um, the next color, hilariously, is the sweater color I'm wearing, which I did not do on purpose. <laughs> um, so if anyone's wondering, it's Everglade Heather, the color of my sweater. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be the last triangle repeat. And then I have ribbing and then I'm done and I have to weave in a bajillion ends. That yeah. is one thing. Yeah. Um, also, I've left my floats really loose on the inside because I wanted to be able to stretch. No. Is it coming off? Yeah. <laughs> Yesterday I tried this on and just like a bunch of stitches came off and I was like, ah, I've accepted my fate. So I've left my floats really loose on the inside. It's not as pretty as the, uh, it's not as pretty as the, uh, That's going to be like thermal. Yeah. It's yeah. going to be super warm. That's also why it's a t-shirt. But if anyone wants to just turn this sideways. So a bajillion ends. <laughs> oh my goodness. So that's what I'm going to be spending my, uh, my time doing, but I'm very excited. It's super smooshy. Um, and it's, yeah. Sometimes I think that's the my real favorite. secret of why you do Fair Isle and Shetland wool, because then your ends will just felt themselves into place. You yeah. don't even have to really weave them that well. Yeah. Well, my brain, with some of the Cascade ones, I was just like, oh, I should totally do that. But like, I have Cascade, I have Malabrigo, I have Wool of the Andes, I have Patton's Croy, or not Patton's Croy, um, Patton's Worsted. And it's, yeah, it's my favorite thing. Uh, phone interruption. So I just, yeah, just wanted to say that like, it's a little bit of like kind of wearing your cozy memories. Because this gray down here is a sweater that I knit for my brother for Christmas last year. And then like this, some Malabrigo that I knit gloves for my dad out of that he's pretty much worn for non-existence. Mm -hmm. um, and like this one was my favorite hat that I lost to um, the Moulin Rouge. And then now it's let itself on fire, so it's probably gone forever. Um, and it's just, yeah, and then that's my skirt yarn again. But like it's just, it's great to be able to kind of wear your memories around. And I made it a little bit shorter. Um, I realized I had a short torso, and then when I was going over her measurements about like what it should be, I realized how short my torso is. Because for the smallest size, she said 16 inches. That's... And I did 14. I was going <laughs> to say, she's probably tall, because 16 is long. Well, like it is a longer sweater. I did make it a little bit shorter than I normally would. Yeah. One, because it's very warm. Two, I don't want it to go too far down my hips, because then I'm going to have to start doing some shaping it's stuff. It's skirt. Or for your dresses. Yes. It's perfect for that. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's why I was just like a little bit shorter. And then if yeah. I wear it with jeans, I just wear a tank top or something. Yeah. But yeah. So this is my favorite thing ever. I'm very excited. Also, it yeah. like is very bumpy. And now if I ever want to make so like a good. textured It'll pillow. It'll block really well though. I know. I'm so excited. And even if it doesn't, it's got a good texture to it. I'm just, yeah, I'm just, I'm stoked. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so that's, that's that. Um, I'm hopefully going to finish it today during knit group and then spend forever weaving it ends. <laughs> and then I can actually do my woolen laundry because I've been waiting to do that because I knew that this has to be blocked. So I grabbed all the things and then you can do your announcements because I have nothing else to say after my craft. Thanks. Try not to make noise. Okay. Right. Um, so I only have one little bit for craft all the things this week. Um, sorry, there's a graphic. Um, <laughs> and sound up. effects. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I like the sound effects. Anyhow, so I finished the wedding cross stitch. Um, which will just be like an anomaly to everyone because you guys will probably never see one finished in non photo form. Um, but it's my generic um, pixel people. I will have probably inserted a picture over my face at this point. Um, <laughs> yeah, just generic white people getting married with their date and names. Um, where did they, where was their wedding? It was in New West at the Metro. It was an interesting wedding. Um, the bride hilariously wore a black dress oh, and didn't no. tell anybody. So in the cross stitch, she's wearing a white dress. And like when we were going down that greeting line thing, which why do we do that? I don't need to meet Not the bridal party. Does that anymore. Good. I don't, I don't understand the bridal. You need to meet your phone next Sorry. time. Sorry. Um, <laughs> but, um, so when we were going, when we got to the bride and groom, I um, was just like, I'm sorry, I did a cross-stitch portrait of you and didn't realize you were wearing a black dress. If you want me to sharpie the dress, I will do so. Because I wasn't going to redo it. And she didn't tell me. What, I was trying to pump her for information before the wedding about what her dress looked like. And she wouldn't tell me. And mm. that's probably why. Yeah. yeah. But, like, uh, yeah, it was a really, in really interesting wedding. Um, and they, like, I think they like the cross-stitch. I don't know. But we'll see. But that's a picture. It's done. I'll probably end up making a couple more of those at some point. So that's it. Um, 
you had some announcements you wanted to. Um. So yeah, I just realized because I realized I haven't. Um... I meant Sylvia. Oh, oh I'm yeah, sorry. I'm on there too. But I just I just wrote something in because you guys asked me to. I don't have to. Oh no, no, go ahead. No, did you have craft all the things? I don't have craft all the things. Oh, okay, all right. So that's all for craft all the things. But Sylvia, do you want to talk about your? <laughs> I just there was like announcements, and I was like, I'll announce that Christmas is coming, <laughs> and that you should buy my book. Yay! Yay! That's, that's valid. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's a very good announcement. We do have Sylvia's book at the store. I don't yeah. know if we've talked about that. I don't know before. If we yeah, we also just got within from Jane Richmond. Ooh, that's amazing. true. Yeah. And I think, so you can knit all the shawls and all the sweaters and all the things over yeah. Christmas. It's perfect. Yeah, totally. And the book, my book is, is like, it, it's a good gift because it is so picture-y. Nice. <laughs> it is it's, beautiful. It's, it's like, it's got a nice, it. it's got a nice look. Like I'm, I'm trying to convince people that it's a good Christmas book. Um, it's just and a good book in general. It's a <laughs> camera. Yeah, flip through it. Um, it's, um, <laughs> I like do my spiel. Hundred percent, hundred percent self-funded, self-photographed. I did all the layers. I want to do that one, that light and darkness one. I know it's so pretty. I was like, that's my favorite, and then I say that about every one of them. That's my favorite. <laughs> but it's, it's um it's printed on recycled paper. Hundred percent Canadian. It's printed in Burnaby. The yarns are Canadian. I'm Canadian. The um, editors are Canadian. The models are Canadian. Is there anything else that can be Canadian? It's being Inc. sold at a Canadian store. <laughs> being sold at Canadian stores, yeah. And it's um, it's also, I like paid extra to have it carbon neutral. So oh, nice. It is like super awesome. And if you want, um, you can, I can write it down for you. <laughs> All of those things, because they're not in the book, because I didn't want to be that person. It's <laughs> okay. I'll just like put a scrolling thing across. Yeah. Like, it's like 100% Canadian. Colon. I sort of just, I just tried really hard to do it well, and then at the no. end I was like, "Oh, there's a really long list of things," and it sounds kind of douchey to say it. No, I like, did it anyway. <laughs> you self-published. You wrote. You self-published. You wrote patterns. Like it's yeah. crazy. Like the amount of work that yeah. went into that. Yeah. I thought it was a lot of work to knit all the things in there. Yeah. Um, like I only knit one of them, but like knitting all the things would be a lot of work. You knit all the things, then design them, design them, knit all them, put them in a book, and then photograph and them, all them just being yeah. thrown in the air. Um, Literally everything. I like, also a lot of work. made the font large for and charts large for people so they can see most of the charts. There's a couple that are a little small, but that's they're yeah. charted and written, right? Charted and written for everything. Yeah, it's, it's nice good. one because I mean, you know, people always say, "Oh, you can just like if you get a magazine and the charts are too small, you can just photocopy them." But not everybody has a photocopy. No, that's rough to do. Yeah. And it's bad for the book binding. That's what I was. It like. is too. Yeah. Well, nowadays you can just take a picture of it with your phone. And well, it if you yeah, it comes with the the um, e e copy as well. If you need to. Oh, you know, right. Yours are fine, but in magazines, the charts. Are yeah, tiny. yours are nice and big. And it's got how to design your own waiting for rain style shawl with cool. um, empty charts for you to chart your own lace, and you can follow the instructions for um, the pay. You can't see that. There we go. We've got Nicola throwing stuff. Anyway, um, uh-huh. it's super rad. Please buy it. I have a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I made some interesting decisions with printing quantities. I am, Alexa came to the guild like um, in November and she was talking about like when the first batch of books arrived on her front door and she's yeah. like, I've made a horrible mistake. I know. <laughs> There's too many of these. No one's going to buy these. Yeah. I'm going to be stuck with these forever. So I, was making, I was making a joke that I was like, After Knit City, I like, I sold a good quantity, but not as much as I thought I was going to After Knit City. And then I was like, I'll just be that lady who's like got uh, like a whole bunch of books, <laughs> just walking around Commercial Drive being like, do you want a book? I got a book. You want a book? <laughs> and then, like, slowly deteriorate into, like, buy my book. <laughs> you just have to wear one of the shawls and then have a book. And be like, and when someone says, I love your shawl, you say, oh, here, buy the <laughs> book. <laughs> yeah, I have to take credit cards. Exactly. Yeah, so, anyway, I'm a little crazy. But it was good. It was a good nine months of, of solidly. It's like a full baby. It yeah, is. it took yeah. me nine months. I know. I gained a bunch of weight. <laughs> <laughs> Not going to lie, it really did happen. Probably my friends were easier saying, to make a baby. It probably, probably. would have been, yeah. It yeah. would have been yeah. much more passive. Yes. But it was great. I like it was a good it was a cool thing because I got to um, like I managed to sort of take time off my normal jobs to like mm-hmm. really focus on it and like it was it was awesome and ter- terrifying mostly terrifying <laughs> every morning I'd wake up and I'd be like oh god <laughs> there's so much to do oh anyway enough about that oh. did you then when it was all done kind of wake up and be like oh what am I supposed to do now I did I had I didn't I never had the like oh my god, I made a book. That never really fully happened. Yeah. It might happen like in a year when I've forgotten yeah. <laughs> all of the of hardships. Books. Yeah. Um, and then, but no, I've definitely had the like, oh, I, that's why I knit so many shawls. I was like, because I did not work on anything other than the book. Right. I just couldn't concentrate on it. 
And so I was like, I didn't have knitting to soothe me. Um, but yeah, no, it's good. Yeah, I'm surprised you didn't come up with like a whole bunch of garter stitch blankets. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, I yeah. couldn't even. Yeah, right. Yeah, just made a bunch of blankets <laughs> like, for seriously cold yeah. people. Yeah. Just oh, like yes. six strands held together. I do. You're like, I can't even. <laughs> I need another sample of that to rephotograph oh, it. Yeah. And I have a fix for it. That's just it's not it's not nothing's wrong with the blanket, but I have like a. A stitch count fix, but so if I anyone out there wants it in Canada, I was thinking of making it out of the custom the sea fusion. That would be amazing. Be like I will best, photograph it. The best Canadian blanket ever. If you feel if you feel up for it, I would I can help fund that. Because it was what ten, <laughs> ten skeins of the Cascade Magnum. Oh version? god, I don't know. <laughs> it was so, so much many. money. I kept going back and being like, oh, I need more. Can you put like ten aside for me? <laughs> And just being like, oh, $25 each. Well, like, with the, the giant blanket trend that is a thing now, yeah. which I don't understand, that's why I don't understand it. Because you're just like, yeah. it's like a bajillion dollars, and then most of those blankets are just roving and will yeah. fall apart immediately. Well, yeah. this Cascade Magnum is a type of breed that will wear better than 100%. Yeah. The ma it's, ma it's, I mean, it's at my Grammy's house now, but it's still alive. Yeah, it's, I mean, Magnum's still a single, too, though, which, you know, has... Yeah. Yeah, but it would be amazing my brain feels out of the the one that I just put down. The sea fusion. Yeah, yeah, that one. Yes. You could just knit a bunch of your shawls and seam them together too. That is the other option. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> I do have enough shawls for that. <laughs> Giant shawl monster like Nicholas. <laughs> City. That was never gonna live that, that down. So that was amazing. Well, just like the gifts were all over Instagram. It was one of my favorite things. It was. It was so funny because she didn't realize how silly she looked until she walked over to the mirror, and then the first thing she saw herself, she just dropped to the ground laughing, laugh crying, like with tears. She was so we were so delirious at the end of Knit City. Oh, oh, her little yeah. waddle was so funny too when she's like dancing. I know. It was so hilarious. She just. It was so. Yeah, it was delightful. I also was like, holy. Crap, I have a lot of shawls. Yes, like, I do. partly have just resigned to the fact that I'm a shawl knitter. Like, I treat it like sort of like mind games, puzzly mm -hmm. thing. Like, I used to feel like bad about it, but then I just, I'm like, nope, this is who I am. This yeah. is who I am, guys. Well, there are women who like knitter. only knit socks for like their entire knitting lives. Yeah. yeah. So, which, like, if it makes you happy, go for it. But yeah. My brain's like, also, you don't need that many socks. At least shawls, you can train them up, like, per day. And, like, I just don't have, like, stuff. I only wear the one, and then the rest are all for samples. Yeah. There you go. Anyway, so. Your samples are very effective, though. The reason I knit my rain outside mm -hmm. is because I was in Langley on yeah. a very cold day, and yeah. yours was there, and I was standing next to the alpaca, and I was like, you know what? That's a great idea. I'm really cold right <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, as a knitter, this is ridiculous. I can <laughs> never be cold, ever. I know. I also give all my shawls away. Like, as soon as they're done, retired to samples, they get gifted, so. There you go. But, that's a good plan. <laughs> That's just who I am. It's like crosswords. Like I just like, and I I am actually I'm not a, I'm not a pleasure knitter. Mm -hmm. Like I knit for like to get concepts out. It's I have a really different way of doing things. But yeah. most of the time I knit because I want the finished thing. Clearly, yeah. This is not for fun. Oh man. This is because someone bought me yarn and Pers I hate myself. Perseverance. Like, yeah. Like whoa. <laughs> yeah, this is gonna feel like probably more of an accomplishment than the color work sweater. <laughs> this is like, you're like, <laughs> it's going to. I don't know if you have a degree or anything, but you should just put that up on your wall, like <laughs> just <bouncing. laughs> Yes, yeah. Like, this, next, this, uh, this was harder. <laughs> but like, it's like my wet coast walls, like manager card, and then like the shawl or like this thing, and then like the sweater, and then like, okay. yeah, that's it. Um, and then my first ever sweater, which was a like, cabled, the blackberry cardigan, um, nice. which is like a fully cabled pieced sweater and for some reason for my first sweater that's where my brain went yeah because i was an idiot go big or go home man so yeah i didn't realize how big of a thing it was it's like when i meet people and they their first knitting project was estonian lace i'm like well that that's a bold choice and then i meet people who've been knitting for 20 years and they're like i just knit hats and you're like okay yep <laughs> everyone takes very different journeys so i know it's so different mm -hmm. sorry you have store news but oh yeah sorry just, as we oh. keep babbling Whoa, that's all right. it's, conceptual it's not um <laughs> It's very limited store news. But I haven't even managed to Instagram these, I realized, so I thought I should talk about them. Oh, I just want to see if I can pop this out. We have pom poms. Little fun fur. Little, they're not fun fur. They're um they're not fun fur. They're acrylic and they're fake fur. Yeah, that's it. Bow fur. Bow fur. And they're we have them in a bunch of different fur. colors. Um and I'm waiting for the I just ordered the big ones. Because the, these said five when I was ordering, these were five centimeters and I couldn't really conceptualize how big they were. And then I realized that they came, and I'm like, wow, they're so little. But they look super cute on kids' hats. 
Um, and then... You could do multiples. Of them. Yeah, I was thinking that. A couple of them together would be super fun in different colors. Or, like, on the yeah. ends of tassels or something? Yeah. yeah, or if you had, like, a scarf, you could put them on the corners of the scarf. There you go. Um, or you, you could just fun. put them in your hair if you wanted. You, you could. You Actually, could um, I've seen this really funny thing for, um, for, um, for ugly sweater parties. Is, mm-hmm. Can I see this? Um, so you do your hair in, like, a top knot, and then you put antlers hanging off of it, and then you take a pom-pom, and you put it on the top, and your <laughs> hair is a Rudolph head. So. That's hilarious. That's also another usage. <laughs> That's too funny. So yeah, they have little like, strings on there to tie them on with. Yeah. Um, and I was that I was looking at these boxes, and I just have to show you this because I think it's hilarious. This it's dude's the guy. So this weird. dude, he's so funny. I don't know why. It's like a like fake cutout piece of fabric for the the beard, and then this crocheted hat, and it's just so it's random. Weird yarn hair, it's like we. Strange. It's very strange. I don't know. They're they're just done a hat with a pom pom, but they did a whole thing. I think they're made in Germany. I don't know if that <laughs> makes any difference. No, but it makes it more confusing. Normally, the Germans are very efficient and like clean with their packaging. It's I dated Rico. German. <laughs> no, I dated German. Yeah, I know. It's like not clean with their packaging. It's just it's total opposite. It doesn't actually say where it's made, Stereotypes. but it's from Rico Design, which is definitely German, and all the writing oh, is yes. German. So yeah, no, that's the company that those socks I knit. It's from that yeah. company. That's those socks. Rico Design. Like eighteen pairs of socks is here. <laughs> so that's my only store news right now. Yeah, we're in. Um, Christmas prep mode, pretty much. Yes. Um, so, much. Well, I think we're getting maybe like new sock yarns at some point, but I and, was like, expecting new things, ones but. for sure. But um, I don't know. At this point, it's all in when they decide to send me stuff. So yeah, because it's the busy season for our suppliers as well as for us. Yes. So we're trying to keep up the best we can. Um, everyone's flying around like chickens with their heads cut off at yes. this point. It's pretty much from October onwards, everyone's. We're all Matt Smithing it up just the whole time. Um, but yeah, that's I think all we have. Do you have anything you want to? I knit three and a half inches. Yay! Well, that's good. No, almost three, three and a bit. I think I've knit an inch and a half. half you can see the color change. But when you're wearing it, it's not gonna. Yeah, like, no one's gonna care. No, it'll be okay. You need to like use half of it at the other end somehow. Yeah. My and brain. Then, okay. then it won't. And I gotta read it into the pattern. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm like TLDR, except for that doesn't actually refer no, to this, but it's how I feel right now. That's this. this one. This purple is oh. that purple. Oh yeah, it is. Yeah, is it it's purple? not the darker gray. It's like a purpley gray. Oh man. I think that Malabrigo goes through phases with their colors because you'll get like a batch of different colored yarns, and they all kind of have the same color tone to them. It's like they just forgot to clean the dye pot. I think them. they actually probably did do that. They were like, oh, this one's going like, to be We have lots of purple gray. dye today. Let's make it all themed purple. Yeah. Yeah. That's the fun thing about, like, hand dyeing and that oh, sort yeah. of stuff, though. It's all very fluid and mm-hmm. stuff. And, and it's all very ethereal. And yeah. I, well, working at yarn shops with Malabrigo is, like, a nightmare. Someone comes in with a Malabrigo tag, and I'm like, just don't even. <laughs> just find If you didn't that buy enough. Yeah, yeah, if you did not buy enough, you're just, that's your own fault. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. That's funny. Last time I was at 88 Stitches, um, Sue was um, knitting a shawl with the anniversary colorway. Yeah. And, like, I got some to knit a sweater out of, and they're completely different. Like, yeah. mine are way, yeah. mine's way pinker. Hers was, like, almost entirely purple. Yeah, I've yeah. seen some that were, like, some combination of the two, and yeah. I'm like, I don't. I don't understand. Well, I'm even, so glad. I still, <laughs> oh, yeah. so glad I got I, some. Like but. when you get, um, I know like when Roxanne was trying to do a sweater out of the teal feather, she like took the entire bag, opened up every skein and laid it out and then picked the, all those, the six that like look the best together. Yeah. yeah. And cause even within the same batch, you get crazy variation. Yeah. yeah. I have, I have two skeins of Archangel fingering weight sock that I, I bought when color. I first started knitting. Yeah. Cause it's my favorite blend of Archangel. I've never seen yeah. it done as nicely since then. I'm not going to knit with it, but I have it. <laughs> Just stare at it, mount that on your wall. I was going to do a seed stitch, like, wall hanging with it. Oh, I nice. Be really, I think the Malbrigo just calls for seed stitch. Because yeah. it breaks up the... the yeah, Asian. it's just really mm-hmm. nice. Because it's got that... Sometimes it can get that kind of, like, military striping looking yeah. with it. But yeah. Yeah. Sure. Maybe um, one day. Yeah, who knows? Um, we could probably ramble on forever. Yeah. It's very exciting to have Sylvie here, <laughs> so we could talk to her forever. But we should probably, I think, say goodbye. Unless yeah, there's anything probably. else to add. No. I'm just looking, yeah, we should probably say goodbye. The clock's yeah. behind me. That's what I'm looking at. <laughs> Thank you um, for spending some time with us and knitting and listening to us ramble about yes. random things. Um, and we will see you again in two weeks. Yes. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.